Hey Michael with X-Force PC. I wanted to do an experiment. I think I did this a long time ago, but I wanted to revisit it where I tested X-Plane performance and I did it using different memory speeds. And uh, so first I want to talk about the different speeds that I used here. So um, DDR4, you typically just see this number. This is the um, speed in what they call megahertz, but it's technically mega transfers per second. So um, there are other speeds. I tested 2133, 2400, 3200, and 3600. But in between here, you can get uh, 3000 speed, you can get 2666 speed. So there's some other speeds in here. Now the other thing you don't see mentioned all that often is the latency. Now the latency is typically specified in a series of four numbers, but I'm just quoting the first number here in the, the series of numbers because it's indicative of the overall latency of the RAM. This again is not going to be a deep dive like we, we don't normally do deep, deep dives. We kind of keep this on a higher level. Um, and so latency has to do with the responsiveness of the RAM. So there's, again, there's two columns here. So this is bandwidth, this is responsiveness. So this, in theory, is the size of the pipe, how much water you can get through the pipe. And then latency is the responsiveness. So if you ask for a particular piece of information, how quickly can you get it? And um, whenever you go up in bandwidth, you lose some of your responsiveness. So what we found in the X-Plane testing is there's a point of sort of diminishing returns. As the bandwidth goes up, we do see frame rate go up, but then as our latency goes up, it starts to have a cumulative effect on it. Uh, and this 3600 RAM I use probably isn't that great of RAM because we saw, see a big jump between 16 and 19 on the latency. Do keep in mind you can spend more money on low latency RAM. Um, typically the benefit is pretty small and the extra money you would spend, you're probably better off spending uh, somewhere else in the system. But do keep in mind you can buy down this number by buying lower latency RAM. But again, the the effect is generally pretty minimal um, on the overall performance. Now another thing we need to talk about is dual channel versus single channel uh, memory. So if you set your system up, uh, let's say with 16 gigs of RAM, and you buy two 8 gig sticks, and like this is what we do, and you put them in the proper slots on the motherboard, usually it's the first and the third slot you fill first, um, you get something called dual channel memory. And what that means is by having two sticks of RAM in the system, the processor can read and write from both sticks at the same time. So as opposed to having one 16 gig stick versus two eights, you can get a little bit of a performance benefit uh, with that. So uh, again, you have to populate the RAM in the correct slots for that to happen. And so we'll also look at the effects of dual channel versus single channel uh, memory. Last thing I want to point out is just because you stick in faster RAM doesn't mean you're actually going to get that speed. And you may say, whoa, what's up with that? Well, the chipset has to support that speed RAM, first of all, uh, or the motherboard. Um, technically, the chipset... Um, support something lower and then the motherboard supports something higher they consider it overclocking but the bottom line is you have to check your motherboard make sure if you're going to buy let's say 3200 megahertz ram that your board can actually take advantage of the 3200 megahertz ram the other thing is if you just stick it in there and just turn the thing on you're not going to be running at 3200 you're probably going to be running at 2133 or 2400 it depends on the base whatever the base uh, memory clock speed is of the motherboard, that's what you're going to be running at. So you have to go into the motherboard uh, BIOS and enable something called the XMP profile. Um, I should know what XMP stands for, but I don't write off the uh, top of my head. But it's the letter X, the letter M, and the letter P, XMP. And um, you turn on the XMP profile, usually it's profile 2, for your memory, and then if you have, let's say, 3600 RAM, 
you know, you'll see it's running probably at 2133. As soon as you turn on that XMP profile, it'll jump up to the 3600 or whatever speed that you have. But do keep in mind, again, buying faster RAM and then not turning on the XMP profile uh, really does you no good. You can also uh, probably get some software. Uh, I might make some recommendations later on in this video about some software that will actually report what speed your memory is running. That way you can be sure that you're actually getting the speed that you think you're getting. Okay, so let's talk about the results. So um, the results were eye-opening. I guess they weren't surprising except maybe the fact that um, you can get almost a 20% performance increase in certain situations. So if you've got a computer running 2133 RAM and or you have a computer with 3600 RAM and you haven't turned on the XMP profile in the BIOS and it's running at 2133, you could get up to a 20% performance boost by um, simply running your memory at the higher speed or by buying faster RAM. So, uh, by the way, to do this testing, I use the built-in frame rate test that X-Plane provides. I use test number five, which is, uh, they have like five levels, or maybe it's six levels of tests. And uh, anyway, I've used level five, which is kind of the, the high-end uh, built-in frame rate test. And then when you're done, you look in the log.txt file, and it gives you a report of what your frame rate was. So... Let's put up the, the frame rates. Now, first of all, you'll see that running single channel 2133 RAM, um, we were under 40 frames per second. And then you go to the other end of the spectrum where we're running, you know, 3200 dual channel or 3600 dual channel, and we're up close to 50 frames per second. And so that's a really nice increase in performance. And by the way, we're using a high-end CPU here, the 9700K 8-core, and we're using a G an RTX 2080 graphics card because I wanted to take those out of the equation, so I wanted to use something really fast. That way the memory is the only possible bottleneck that we are having here. Um, so now let's look at the percentage faster that each RAM is, and I'll put that chart up now. And so you'll see that um, if you're running 2133 single channel memory, and your board supports it, and you turn on the XMP profile, um, and you go to something like 3200 RAM, you could get close to a 20% performance increase. Now. Uh, the slowest thing that we use here in our, like in our budget systems, at least currently today, now keep in mind when this video is made, November of 2018, is dual channel 2400. And um, you'll notice there's not a huge benefit between dual channel 2400 and some of the higher speeds. Um, but we're about to move to 2666 as our lowest speed RAM. So again, do your research. Um, just throwing in faster RAM isn't going to do it. You got to make sure your board supports it and that you turn on the XMP profile in the BIOS and make sure that it is running that faster speed. Um, there is a program called RAMMON that is uh, free that will uh, report your RAM speed. I actually tried to use it here and it didn't want to work for me. Nothing seemed to want to work, but I have a really new, new, new motherboard that just came out and probably these new tools haven't caught up to uh, this new motherboard I have, but RAMMON seems to be a good one. Another one is uh, Specky, that's spelled S-P-E-C-C-Y, will uh, report your RAM speed as well. Do keep in mind some of these tools will also show half of this number, so if it shows 1600, you're actually getting 3200 or if it shows 1200 you're actually getting 2400 exactly the technical reasons why that happens I don't know but just keep in mind that that could happen so hopefully this has been eye-opening and informative it was to me um, there is a point of diminishing return too. notice once we cross over from 3200 and we start to move into this 3600 area that's where things start to, to tail off so right now it looks like the sweet spot is uh, 3200 and that's actually what we're using in our RTX systems today.